Lori with Let's Make Art. Welcome to part six of our acrylic beginner, beginner series. Today we're gonna go over a few of the tips and tricks for finishing your projects, for um, safety and disposal, and for some other troubleshooting things that you might run into. So first I wanna show you some of the products that I'm gonna be talking about today. We have some varnish. We have some fixative. And I'll talk about what these are in a minute here. I have a shielding lotion and this continuous spray bottle, okay? One of the things that you'll find when you are working with acrylics is that they are permanent, which is great. And typically if you have a painting that, or like whether it's on canvas or paper and you only use acrylic, you do not have to necessarily use any sort of varnish in order to seal it. But I'll show you what it does when you do use a varnish. Also, if you are using any sort of loose media like chalk or pencil or charcoal or anything like that, you'll wanna fix it first with a fixative before you go to varnish it. And that's a common thing that I wanna point out. A lot of people confuse varnish and fixative or think they're one and the same, but they are very different. And just to kind of go over that again, so fixative will fix loose media onto your paper or your canvas and varnish will seal and protect and um, a finished piece. Okay, so usually if I'm using mixed media or loose media, I'll end up using both a fixative and a varnish. All right, so let me show you first how to fix your work. So on this tulip piece here, I came in and I used some soft pastels, some chalk pastels, new pastels on there. And so what I will need to do is fix that. One of my favorite fixatives is called this Degas Fixative Spectra Fix is the brand. And this is odor-free, non-toxic, and all natural. I believe it's made from milk casein. Wow. Yeah, and so you can spray this inside without having to worry about any harsh fumes. I'll kind of demonstrate here. What you wanna do is use a very light mist. So I'm gonna hold it a little ways from my paper and I'm just gonna do a really light mist, okay? So that's my first mist there and it often takes several coats. So once that's dry, I'll come back again and I'll add another layer. And I may add several layers um, in order for it to completely fix. And the way to know if it's completely fixed is to take your finger and rub on, gently rub on any of your loose media. And you'll see there that mm. it comes back up. So you know that it is not fixed. Why is this a problem? <laughs> I know um, from experience that if you go to varnish a piece, where you think all of your loose media is fixed, it will quickly ruin your piece. <laughs> You'll get, it'll all mix into your varnish and it'll kind of cloud and muddy up your painting. If you work quickly enough, you can take that off and fix it, um, like remove it. But anyway, you wanna fix it. Okay, there's another kind of fixative that you can also try. This is one I like if I do, if I'm not confident that my chalk or whatever other media that I use is permanently fixed onto my page. This is a, an aerosol fixative. So it's a workable fixative and you'll wanna use this outside because it does have an odor to it, but I found that this is kind of a nice alternative as well. Okay. Did you know about fixative, Keenan? I have never even <laughs> heard of it. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. It's just, it does take some time and patience to get it right, but it's great. Totally worth it then. Totally worth it, yes. Okay, so one of the next things I'll talk about is varnish. And again, varnish is kind of the last thing that you put onto a painting and you don't have to necessarily varnish acrylic paint because it is permanent. But when you do varnish, when you do add varnish, I'll show you what it can do. It can deepen the colors and the depth of your painting and it also will seal and protect from dust and, and other things like that. Varnish comes in some different sheens. So here I have a matte varnish and a satin varnish. You can also get glossy varnish. I think there's even extra glossy. So. What should I use, matte or how about satin? Should I use satin today? Satin, I'm a big fan of satin. Satin? Okay. Is satin similar to matte? It is similar, but it is gonna have a little bit more of a sheen than okay. matte would. Matte, when I've used matte in the past, you just can't even tell there's a varnish on there okay. at all. Yeah, Yeah. so then the satin, that's where that's where. Which is fine, at. if that's the look you're going for, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use, oh, this is brand new. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like 
I like using some varnish because I, I really do feel like it kind of makes my painting look wet. It makes it just the, the colors richer and deeper. So I feel like it is worth it. It's like a reward. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna use this paper as my palette for right now. When you are going to varnish, maybe have a, a specialized brush for varnishing so that you don't uh, ruin any of your other brushes. So let me go ahead and put this in and I'm gonna start applying it. Okay, so see how, let me hold it up to the camera here. See, now it's still wet, of course, but see how it deepens these colors? Yes. It kind of adds to the overall um, vibrance as well. I'm gonna go ahead and apply. Usually when I'm varnishing, I do at least two coats. You can do more if you'd like. Okay. I like to do, see with the blue, see how that, like when I put yeah. it on there, it just pops. Really nice. Definitely read the directions on whatever uh, varnish that you're using to make sure that you're giving enough time between each coat and applying it the way that they recommend. Do you generally put more than two coats of varnish or are you done with two? I usually find that two is pretty good. Okay. Every once in a while I've done three and also every once in a while I've just done one as well. If I feel like it's, if I've got it, got it good. Yeah. Yeah. Does it matter what kind of brush you use? I don't think it really matters. I would just say don't use your best brush because it'll be a little harder on your brush than acrylic would be. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And once it dries, it's going to retain that vibrancy and depth. So that's what varnishing can do. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So next I want to talk about a common problem that might occur when you are working with paper, any type of paper really. Um, do you see how this is kind of warped? Yes. Yeah, can I just show the side camera? So it just doesn't lay flat, right? Right. Okay, there is a way to fix this. And mm. one of my little tips that I, tricks that I use is to use my spray bottle and gently mist the back of my paper. Oh. Okay, that's all you need. And then I'm just gonna put it either under something heavy or I like to put it kind of in something heavy. I'm gonna kind of slide that in there and then I'm just gonna let that sit. And really it just takes a few minutes and I've done a lot of them at a time. When I was getting ready for a big art show, I had a stack of you know somewhat warped watercolor paper and I wanted to put them in mats so I wanted them to be nice and flat. And this, someone told me about that trick and I used it and it worked great. Dang. Yeah, so that helped a lot. So Super while that's, convenient. yeah, while that's doing that, um, and you, I usually stack at home, I stack a few more books on top just to make sure it's nice and heavy, but we'll see how we do. Okay, so now let's talk about acrylic safety. There are some considerations to make when you are working with acrylic paints. Certain pigments have some metals in them or some toxicity to them. And so you wanna look into that when you are dealing with some different colors. I can show you two here on the on these paints. On the back side of your paint, you should be able to find the um, some information there. So here it says health and safety. There are no currently known health hazards associated with this one. And then on here as well, you should be able to find the pigment. Here we go, pigments, quinacridone. PV19. So I can go and I can look that up online and, and, and look and see if that is a, con, a pigment to be concerned about. Most of your paint, most of your cadmiums are, for instance, are ones that you want to be careful with because they do have some toxicity, some um, metal components to them. And so one thing that you can do is you can wear gloves, which a lot of artists do wear gloves. Um, or just be very careful not to get them on your hands, of course. One thing that, one product I like to use is a shielding lotion. This one's called Gloves in a Bottle, and there are other brands as well. And so what this does is it helps create a barrier between your skin and the paint. Now, will it actually prevent any toxic um, chemicals or metals getting into your skin? Probably, probably not, and I would, go, I would really research that before I trusted it. But it does help create a little bit of a barrier and it also helps paint wash off of your skin more easily. I know when I use it, my, skin's, my skin is nice and soft and there's not as many cracks or dry areas where it can, where the paint could, could get into my skin deeper. So this just goes on just like a regular lotion. And I did, 
I did research this a, a bit because I was kind of like, hmm, I was a little bit skeptical because I thought, well, does would regular lotion just do the exact same thing? And I've tried both, and I will say this definitely, there's something to this. It is a little more expensive than a regular lotion, um, but it creates a nice, like smooth feeling to it. It's not greasy, hmm. and it also will stay on through multiple washes. Oh, wow. So if I'm, if I'm washing my hands, it'll stay on. I know a lot of um, people in um, healthcare and things like that may use this depending on what type of health care you're in of course you want to take the proper precautions yeah but that's something to look into and research on your own as well um but yeah definitely like be knowledgeable about the type of paint that you're using and and do what you feel best okay so let's check now and see how our paper is doing okay cross your fingers i know we have several books <laughs> at home I, I like stack a bunch on top <laughs> to make sure okay I think, oh, what do you think? Ooh. Okay, see how that is much flatter now? Look at that drastic And if difference. I had even left it on a little bit longer, I think I'd have it even flatter. But that's a great way to, if you're worried about the warp in your paper, to get, get rid of that and not have to worry about it. Nice. Okay. All right, so the last thing I'll talk to you about is disposal of your acrylic paints. Um, we want to minimize the amount of acrylic paint that goes down our water and into our water systems. And so a couple of ways that you can do that is to, whenever you're done painting, use up the rest of your paint either on a brush board or another painting or onto paper towel. And for brush board, I just mean an extra piece of paper that you're just kind of like a scratch piece of paper that you're just kind of adding some stuff to. I do those a lot. Also, or you can like wipe it off wipe the excess off on paper towel, and then go ahead and rinse. Um, you can go to Golden or Liquitex. Those are two big acrylic manufacturers, and on their websites, they do have information about the best practices for disposal of acrylic paint. I encourage you to go there and look at those options and see what might work best for you, what you feel most comfortable about. Don't be discouraged, though. There's a lot of things that you can do, and you can still paint with acrylics and feel good about it. Um, another thing you can do is let your paint dry on your palette and then put all of the dry palettes that you have into a special receptacle that you can then dispose of safely. Um, what I do at home is I try to minimize the amount of paint that I put down the drain. I know some people say if you can get as much paint as you can out of there, it's okay for a little bit to go down the drain. So that's what I do. And then I just keep kind of a, a little, um, oh, one of those little, what do you call them, Keenan? Containers. <laughs> It's like a filter, <laughs> filter. like a filter oh, okay. that catches anything. So any paint particles that might be dry, like larger pieces would be mm. caught in that. And then I kind of dump those out and put those into the trash as opposed to down into our water system. That makes sense. Like a metal mesh maybe. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so definitely do your own research and do what you feel best about. But these are some ways that you can finish your paintings and use fixative to fix any loose media. And also a little bit, a few other tips to help with, uh, your acrylic painting. To see more of our beginner series, check out letsbakeart.com.